Hey there, it's Simon Hurley from Inclips, and I'm here with scrapbook.com, ready to share about all the different mediums on the market that are great for stamping. Now there's a lot, so bear with me as we go through all of them and really dive into some of these mediums. Now you definitely do not need all of these. You can kind of go through and choose what you know you're gonna use in your crafting and invest more in those. So starting off with the inks that you can't really manipulate but are gonna do some great stamping effects, we have the archival ink. Now this is a waterproof permanent ink. So when this goes on the surface and you add lots of water mediums like we're gonna to do today, this really stands and doesn't bleed. So it really stands the test of time on your project and gives a nice crisp result. Now this pigment ink, this is the VersaFine Claire. This is really great for fine details and it's a fast drying pigment ink. So it'll give you a great result and it really captures all those awesome details in your images. Now the scrapbook.com hybrid and dye inks. The dye ink is great for watercoloring and again it'll be waterproof when you create with your projects. And this hybrid ink is a great all-around ink pad. So it's going to give you that great black image but it's going to be great and not bleed for watercolor and also alcohol markers and I'll share that in just a little bit here. Now the stays on ink. This is a great black ink if you want to stamp on um, different surfaces that aren't necessarily paper and you don't know if they're going to stick. So like glass or acetate this is going to stay really nicely on and um, really stand the test of time on those projects. Now with this Versamark ink you don't want to buy this ink pad thinking that it's going to give you a black stamped image. This comes in a black ink pad but it's actually a clear ink. So this is a sticky ink that's meant for embossing. You could also get kind of a watermark image with it that's a little bit darker than your color of cardstock but it's not a black ink so be sure to be careful for that. So now for inks that you really can manipulate well, I love the Distress inks and the Distress Oxides. You might think that just because the Oxides came out, you don't need the Distress inks, but they really play and react differently on the cardstock and you can decide which one's better for you. So I'm gonna grab some watercolor cardstock here so I can share how they both react. So I'll take some of the Distress Oxide, I'll swipe it down onto the surface, and then I'll take some of the Distress ink too. I'll swipe that down onto the surface on the other side here. Now the inks come in minis or larger ink pads, but the oxides just come in the larger ink pads. They can't get the formulation down into the smaller size, so the larger ink pads are still really great to work with. Now these both react with water, but they react a little bit differently. So with this dye-based ink, you get that fun kind of bleeding and you still keep that really nice vibrant color there. Um, it's a water-based ink, so it's just gonna kind of bleed and create that really cool watercolor looking effect. But with this uh, Distress Oxide, it's a dye pigment fusion. So it has some of the qualities of dye inks and pigment inks. So when I spray it here, it's gonna bleed just like it did with this ink, but it gives more of a chalky effect and kind of that chalky look on it. Now when I dry this too, you'll definitely be able to see the difference. So I'm gonna bring in a heat tool and quickly dry both of these pieces so you can see exactly what they look like when they're dry. Now these aren't the exact same color of blue, but this one's a little bit darker. And you can see that with this one, it kind of created that chalky haze over the top of it, which I really love. It looks a little bit vintage. And then out of the edges, you get some of that dye ink kind of bleeding out and creating that really cool effect. Now on this Distress ink, you have that really nice bleeding effect going on and it keeps that color really bright and kind of gives that watercolor effect. So both of these are really different inks and you can kind of choose which one you like to use best on your projects or use both of them. So I want to quickly share um, this black hybrid ink from scrapbook.com and how it doesn't really bleed when you stamp it down with images or a color with an alcohol marker or watercolors. So I'm going to ink up this red rubber stamp here. And then I'm going to take a piece of watercolor cardstock and stamp it right down onto the surface. So once I have that all stamped down, I'm gonna, you can either give it a couple of seconds and keep working on something else. You wanna make sure this ink is dry. So I'm just gonna take my heat tool and quickly heat set it. Now the reason I quickly did that is because if it's not completely dry, it might still bleed. So you wanna give it a couple of seconds when you, um, after you stamp it on the piece of paper. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm using some Nuvo alcohol markers and I just wanna share quickly. I'll go over top of the lines images here. You can see that as I color over top of that image, none of the lines are bleeding, which is really great. And then I'm going to go over top of it with watercolor too. So I'll bring my watercolor brush into here. And then I'm going to go in with a yellow too. I find that yellow kind of shows the bleeding the most. So I wanna um, create that cool effect and show you how these lines do not bleed when you use this water or alcohol marker on it. 
So you can see that all the detail is still there with that ink, and it's a really great all-around black ink because you've got that alcohol marker you can use it with, or you can use it with watercolor, which creates really cool effects and keeps those crisp lines really nicely. So now I'm going to be sharing how to use a variety of different water-based mediums to do some stamping. So you don't have to just stamp with inks, and I think it's really fun to bring some other mediums into the mix for some different results. So I'm going to use some watercolor cardstock here, and this will react best with watercolor mediums. This is the Distressed Watercolor cardstock, so it's got a textured side and a smooth side, and I find that the smooth side is a little bit better when you're stamping. So I'm going to bring in my wood block Hero Arts Sunflower stamp here, and I'm going to start out with these uh, Vicky Booten crayons. So these are water-based crayons, and they're really fun to work with. You can work with them while they're wet, or you could use them when they're dry first. So I'm going to add them right onto the surface here with just the dry crayon. I'll go in here and just kind of scribble all over the stamp. And I'm going to grab some yellow, kind of add some bright color to the sunflower. And after I've done that, I'm going to use this Nouveau Mister, just mist my stamp with some water. And I'll bring it to the surface and stamp it down. And you can see that really fun effect you get with these crayons. It creates that really cool watercolor effect, and you get a really cool blend between the colors, which I think looks really pretty. So now there's still um, crayon left on our stamp, so I'm going to mist it again. And I'll stamp it down onto the surface. And I can even do it one more time. Mist it again, and stamp it right down onto the surface. You can see you get different generations of stamping, and you can probably keep going um, with any leftover crayon that's on your stamp. And then to clean this off, I'm just going to go in with a paper towel and just quickly get all those little crayon pieces out of my stamp. And I think those are super fun to get um, a really unique look on your stamp. So now I'm going to create kind of a colorful background using some of these Tim Holtz stamps. And I'm just going to peel these off of the surface here. And I'll use an acrylic block to stamp them down. And I'm just going to be using this as kind of a textured background so you can finish off the card with some different images or sentiments on the center. So I'm going to grab some of my Distress crayons. I'll start off with this bright orange color. This is Spice Marmalade. I'm just going to run this along the stamp. Now these are really smooth, so I'm just going to apply them down to the surface, and you don't need to apply too much pressure, and they really add lots of color down onto the surface. So I'll go in here with yellow too. I'm kind of mixing and blending these colors together. And it's not going to affect the crayon because you're using these down, so it's not going to harm the tip of the crayon. So then I'll go in here with some red too. So once I've done that, I'm going to go in with a little bit of water again. And I'll apply some water to the surface of the stamp. And then I can stamp it down. You can see the fun effect that you get with that. And again, you can stamp it once or twice to get different variations of the image. But you can see that fun um, color that that stamp adds. And this gives a really cool watercolor effect. So I'm going to just clean the stamp off again quickly with some paper towel here to clean off that crayon. Then I'm going to go in with some other colors here. So I'll throw in actually some peacock feathers. And to get more color out, you just need to twist the top of the crayon. You can apply lots of color down here. So I'll bring in some teal and kind of pink color here. Mix those together on the stamp. And once I've done that, I'm going to spray this as well. And we can stamp that right down onto the surface. And I just stamped that one three times there. So you get lots of life with these different crayons you can use. I'm going to go in here with the last stamp, and I'm just going to apply some of that crayon here. Then I'll bring in some orange, and apply that to the surface as well. I'm just going to spray that again, and stamp it right down. And again, this doesn't need to be perfect. This is more of a mixed media kind of card. So I've just kind of added some texture and color to the background. And you can throw a sentiment on here or throw a little image as well because you've just created a fun background. Now, another thing that I love to stamp with is the Nouveau Glitter Markers because you can get a really fun and shimmery effect. So I'm going back to this wood block stamp here, and I'm going to go in with some of these Nouveau Glitter Markers. 
So this is a felt tip marker, so you want to be careful with it. I turn it on its side like this and lightly color the surface of the stamp with it. This will make sure that the felt tip doesn't get ripped or ruined as you're coloring over top of the rough surface of your stamp. So make sure you're not pressing too hard as well. Now I'll go in here with a little bit of red. You don't really want to color over the other colors that you've added because that might um, kind of stain the tip of your marker. So just kind of be careful to avoid the sections you've already colored. Then I'll go in here with my yellow color as well and I'll finish coloring the whole image with this yellow marker. So once I've added all that color down, I'm going to again spray it really quickly and then I'll take it and stamp it right down onto my card. And look at that fun effect that you get. This looks super cool, I think, once it's finished. And I'm going to quickly heat set this so you guys can see all the shimmer you get once it's dry. Now, once it's all dry, you can see that fun shimmer in there. It's a little bit hard to capture in the camera, but in real life, it's stunning with all that fun shimmer and that really bold, vibrant color you get with it. Now you can see for this card that I created, I actually used those same markers that are the glitter markers from Nouveau, and I stamped the whole background with it. So this is like a first and second generation stamped image, and I did that all around the background to finish it off and create that fun little background of sunflowers. So you can really use these techniques that I shared with these water-based mediums to create some really cool backgrounds for your cards. Okay, so now I'm going to be creating this card with this fun watercolor effect using some watercolor stamps along with my markers to get that really cool and unique effect. So I'm going to be using Art Impressions watercolor stamps and these are designed to be used with markers and inks to create that really fun watercolor look so it really takes the guesswork out of it. So I'm going to start out with one of these little dogs and it comes in a set of six and these are those cling stamps. So I'll take one of these little dogs. I love the one that's standing up here so I'll grab that and I'm going to grab an acrylic block and stick my stamp right onto there. Now when I'm doing this and I want it to be really nice and dark, I like to use a Distress Oxide. So I'm going to go in with Gathered Twigs first. And I'm going to stamp this down onto the surface. So I'm going to ink it up. And I'm not adding any water to this one since I want this image to really stand out off the card. You can see that's a little bit darker and um, it's not watercolored in. And what I'm going to do is I'll watercolor it in with just a water brush here. So I'm going to take some of that ink and pull it in to add a little bit of color to that dog. I don't want to overpower him and I don't want to get rid of too many of those lines because um, this is going to be the image that I want to really stand out of the piece. So I'm just taking some of that ink. Since it's water-based, it's, it's going to react with water here. And next I'm going to go in with some of these flower stamps and these are really what's going to bring to life that fun watercolor look. So I'll go in with this first flower here and I'm going to apply it onto my acrylic block and we can start our stamping. So I'm just going to use distress markers here. I'm going to grab my green marker and the great part about markers is that you can go in and really shade those detailed parts of the stamp. So this stamp has little flowers on it so I can get them a different color than the stem. Now I'm going to spray that. You can spray it as many times as you want to get more of a watered or less of a watered out image. And then I'm going to stamp it a couple different times. I'm just lifting it and kind of shifting it. And you can see that I've got like maybe five stamped images there and they're all different kind of variation of them and it looks really watercolored. So after I've done that, I'm going to bring in another stamp. We want to create some more variation here. So I'm going to just apply that down to the surface. And this is like a little grass patch. Some little flowers at top. And I'm just going to make it all green. Then I'm going to take this and just stamp it right down below the dog. There's lots of water on the surface. So that just kind of um, made the image go out like that. So if you want to, you can bring in a heat tool and dry some of the water here. So once it's a little bit more dry, it'll allow you to kind of go onto the surface here and create some more detailed effects. So this one I didn't even spray at all. I'm just going to stamp around there to add a little bit of detail into here. Now I'll spray this one once and get more of a watercolored look. And those I really didn't spray too much. I like to add a little bit of extra detail into there. 
And now I'm going to kind of fade everything out into the background. And to do that, I'm going to grab this little bundle of grass image. I'm going to dry off my acrylic block to make sure it sticks nicely. And once I got it pressed down there, I'm going to grab some of that green color. I'm going to spray that down and stamp it down here. And then I'm going to grab some more of the brighter colors here and just ink up the top kind of flower portions of them. And what I'm going to do is I've added lots of water to this, and then I'm just going to kind of stamp that around the edges. And that kind of fades it out a little bit more. There's no real detail in that anymore. So once you add lots of water like that, it takes away a lot to the detail and really helps fade into the background. And there we have a really fun watercolor background. And you can kind of keep adding stuff or take away some of the flowers to really create that watercolor look. On this one, you can see I added that dog in a little bit darker and kind of colored him in a little bit more and then added lots more flowers around there and kind of stuck with some reds and different bright colors in there. So you can really finish off the scene with some more flowers as well. So to finish off this card, I'm going to use a sentiment from the Sentiments for Everyday stamp set from Scrapbook.com. This one has some really awesome brush script sentiments that are really great for all different kinds of occasions, like thank you, and you've got some thinking of you, happy birthday, and kind of best wishes and congratulations that cover lots of different occasions. So I'm going to use the best wishes for this card. And you can either stamp it right across the card, or you can do, um, you can cut it kind of apart to create your own sentiment. So you can cut your stamp right down the middle. It's not going to scream. You can apply this back together on the acrylic block, just like it was. But I'm going to kind of make my own sentiment with it here. So we'll take this best wishes and put it right over top of each other like this. And then I'll take the black hybrid ink. And then I can stamp this right above that dog. And I think that goes perfectly with this fun watercolor background. Um, and it really kind of finishes off the card nicely. So to mount this onto the card base, I cut off two of the edges to create a little bit of a border. And then I want to add a little bit of glitter too. So I'm going to grab in my guillotine trimmer from Tonic. And I'll take some of the Silver Sheen Tonic glitter paper. And I'm just going to cut a thin strip of that cardstock. And this is just going to give us a little bit of a border of some fun shine for our card. So to finish this off, I'm going to take some of the tape runner. I'll just apply this onto the watercolor cardstock. And I'll add this right down onto the card here. And I'm leaving a little bit of a border on either side. I'm leaving a little bit of a wider border on the left side, and that's where we're going to add our glitter paper. So I'm just going to put that little strip of glitter paper down there. And then to adhere my glitter paper here, I have this Nouveau glue pen. And I'm just going to apply a little bit to the back of the shimmer paper. Now this starts out kind of as a blue color, but when it dries, it'll dry a nice clear color. And it really makes it easy to add adhesive to the back of the strip. So I just have this scrap cardstock down here, which helped me um, put that adhesive on. And then I'm just going to put that right up next to that corner there. And now you have that nice strip of glitter onto your card. All I'm going to do is go in with a scissors and just quickly trim off both sides here. And then to make sure that this um, fits the card nicely, the card is actually a little bit bigger than the piece that I had cut down. And that happens sometimes. So I'm just going to take my guillotine trimmer. That's why I like having this on my desk. I just slide the piece right into my trimmer. And you're able to trim off those extra little edges. So it's cutting through a couple different layers there but it trims off that bottom edge to a really nice edge, so it keeps it really nice and clean for your card. And there we have our finished background. I love how that watercolor piece came out there, and I also love that fun little shimmer right on the side there that adds a little bit of extra touch to this card. So thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing what you guys create in the gallery. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happy crafting!